Hey, what's up everybody? Before we get into today's episode, we just want to circle back around to last week's episode on talking about conspiracy theories. And uh, we did bring up the conspiracy theories about Kate Middleton. Since that episode aired, uh, we did get further information that she is actually battling uh, stomach cancer. So we just wanted to take the time to acknowledge this and... Uh, if you're listening today, uh, maybe say a prayer for her and her family and uh, just anybody else who's going through uh, certain health trials and cancers and just anything else going on in their lives right now. Enjoy today's show. Welcome to NCC Unplugged, the podcast from Norman Christian Church where conversations, community, and culture converge. Hello, everybody. Welcome to NCC Unplugged. I am the media and tech director here at Norwin. My name is Matt Mastriani, and I am here once again with our preaching minister. hey Jeff Terpstra. All Jeff, righty. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. I don't ever think I've heard you say a before. There you go. Okay. We'll clip it and uh, use it in a sermon some <laughs> Sunday for you. So uh, today's uh, topic and episode is going to actually be about Easter, the upcoming Easter uh, Resurrection Sunday holiday. Yeah, that lots we of stuff around. happening. Yeah, yeah, a lot of stuff happening here at our church locally. Mm -hmm. um, so just kind of want to talk a little bit about it and get the word out, help people uh, maybe plan ahead when they can join us and what Easter at Norwin Christian Church kind of looks like. Yeah, we could talk maybe, even, maybe some of our philosophy behind yes. different special services like that. So as a church tradition, we don't have a lot of things that um, maybe other churches do okay. that uh, traditionally do during these uh, special days. Mm -hmm. You know, Christmas, Easter, uh, different things like that. Uh, we don't have we don't have church traditions. We're a non-denominational church, and so we don't we don't go through a liturgical calendar mm -hmm. or anything like that. It's really up to us and. Uh, what we think would be best to lead people into that time of year. Um, you know, right now we're in the time of Lent. Uh, we as a church body don't do much with Lent. Uh, we have several members and people at the church that do, mm -hmm. uh, and that helps them celebrate during this time of year. Uh, one of our our things, our sayings as church, and this goes back to um, kind of the Restoration Movement, which, which helped plant this church, uh, is that we have no creed but the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, and so we don't have these things set out before us to say, hey, we have to do it this way. This helps us uh, get into a certain mindset, whatever. Uh, we just, we follow scripture. Mm -hmm. right. And so with that, we want to highlight those times of year. Um, and one of those is Easter. That's what we're coming up to. Uh, March 31st this year. Uh, Matt, this year it's on a Sunday. Oh, Easter's on a Sunday this year. As it is every year. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. You almost got me there. Um, that was so close. Yeah. But yeah, so, so it's Sunday, March 31st. Uh, we do have a Good Friday service. Okay. Uh, so Good Friday for us is a time uh, to remember, hey, there was a, there was a point in history when Jesus died. Mm -hmm. And especially for those in the first century that were living with Jesus, they had not seen Sunday yet. They had not seen, right. seen the resurrection yet. Mm -hmm. um, and so for us, we do a service. Uh, it's going to be at 6 o'clock. Uh, nope, it's going to nope. be at 7, seven. o'clock, Matt. I was just pulling Look it up. Look at that. Yeah. He was double-checking me. Yep. 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock on Friday, so that's uh, March 29th. March 29th, 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock on Friday, and it's a bit more of a somber service for us Okay, because it is, it is to remember Jesus on the cross. Sure. Um, that was the avenue by which he had to accomplish what he accomplished on the cross mm -hmm. and, and resurrection. You bring up a good point, too, if I can interrupt. The people back then didn't know. I mean, they should have. They should have, but they didn't fully understand, yes. I, I should say. Jesus was clear on his way. Hey, right. this is where we're going. Right. The son of man must die. This is what we're doing. Right, right. Um, but but yeah, think, they didn't They didn't have the, the complete understanding that we do, that Sunday was coming. Yeah. So... So yeah, it, yeah, it's interesting to look at it that way. I think for them, and if this comes out good, I made this up all on my own. <laughs> it's like putting a puzzle up together upside down. Okay. Like yeah. they couldn't see the big picture. They're like, they had these clues, but like, how does this all go? What do you mean you're going to die, Jesus? Like we gave you our life. Um, was that, was that, that a was, good illustration? I, yeah, I like it. All right, on yeah, the fly. Yeah. Copyright it. 
maybe yeah okay so uh that's that's what we do good friday so it's gonna be acoustic we're gonna have some worship um and by acoustic i mean uh just very minimal instruments Mm -hmm. uh there's gonna be three people up there um i'm gonna be doing not a full sermon it's gonna be shorter lessons interspersed through the songs okay um and it's going to be somewhat similar to what we did last year. Uh, we tried to do some interactive things as you sit in your chair. So we're not going to ask people to move around the room. There's going to be some things at the chairs, and I'm going to say, hey, get this this out from your chair. Um, do this with it so you can remember uh, the sacrifice. And Our whole theme through uh, this weekend, uh, Good Friday, Easter, and then actually two Sundays after Easter— is all going to be about paradoxes. Okay. And the reason I'm doing that is because it's uh, with a joint effort of mm-hmm. some churches in our area. Uh, we have received the same Christmas message as far as preaching from the same text. Mm-hmm. And all the sermons are going to sound different because we're at different churches and our people need to hear different things and we have different contexts. Do you mean Easter messages, not Did Christmas? Did I say Christmas? You said Christmas. Ah, That's all right. Easter. I knew what you meant. Matt will Just wanted to clarify that. that. So yeah, for sure, Easter. Um so that's called the paradox of grace. And okay. in fact, if you live in Westmoreland County, uh, you might see some billboards. If you go to the Westmoreland Mall, there's some signs. There'll be some things in the newspaper. And that's an, an effort of unity with some different churches in Westmoreland County, um, really to grab some more people for Easter. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people around us maybe have different faith traditions, maybe grew up in no faith tradition. And we would love to see you this Easter. Uh, There's other churches, Bible-believing churches in our area that um, are going to be preaching a somewhat similar message. So if you're not able to make it over to us, make it to one of those churches. Uh, You can go to the website. It's oneaster.com, and it lists those different churches of Westmoreland County that are participating in that. But uh, So that's just the Easter message, but based on that, I'm kind of backing up to Good Friday, and we're going to talk about uh, this paradox it's, it's a little bit a twofold paradox, paradox of life and a paradox of, of weakness that um, in order for us to have true life, we mm-hmm. have to die. In order for us to have life, Jesus had to die. Mm-hmm. And it's this paradox of, of things that don't seem to coincide. Um, and to go off weakness that in order for us to have strength, we must have weakness, um, that the gospel seems like weakness. And so for Good Friday, here's our theme verse. It's 1 Corinthians 1, 18 says, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. As it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent, I will frustrate. And so the message of the cross, that Jesus died, that's foolishness. Mm-hmm. You know, superhero doesn't die to save someone. Mm-hmm. They, they're strong and they come through it and they swing in at just the right moment or they use whatever superpower they can uh, to make it work out and happy and everybody's alive at the end. Um, but So the cross is mm-hmm. foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, in other words, to us who have life, it is the power of God. Um, and so there's a, there's a bit of a paradox in that, and we'll use some different things to illustrate that through Good Friday and just how the, the cross brought us life. So that'll be on Good Friday. Um, and then for Easter... Uh, we actually have four services. We have four, not three? Four services. Wow. So we did three at Christmas. I remember. And uh, if you remember, uh, we were probably well beyond <laughs> the capacity that the fire marshal would have allowed. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of, uh, it, it was a good thing, but it was yeah. kind of intense. And, and <laughs> part of it was Christmas was on Sunday, yeah, so it was, yeah. it was a little bit different this year than some others. Uh, Easter's on Sunday every year. We're expanding to four um, our first Easter service, though Easter is on Sunday, is going to be a Saturday night. Okay. So rather than be here all day, uh, that's a huge ask for staff members, uh, for those that are, are teaching kids in the nursery, for those that uh, up are on stage doing worship. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we're going to do Saturday night at 6 o'clock. Right. And then Sunday morning, we're going to have three. We're going to have 7 a.m., Okay. 8.45, and 10.30. 7 Eight forty-five and ten thirty. Yeah. So Excellent. those last okay. two are the are the same as our normal service time. So right. that's why we kept that there. And then we're backing up early in the morning at seven a.m. for you early risers. A lot of people show up for that. I hope so. Yeah. 
Um, we really do ask, you know, if, if you're able to show up at that seven o'clock, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that aren't familiar with Northern Christian church. That'll be there for the first time. A lot of people bring in family. It's a lot easier to invite family to eight 45 or 10 30 than it is to say, Hey, I know you don't normally go to church, but, um, if you could wake up at six and get ready and be at church at seven, that would be great. Right. Uh, now if they're open to that, bring them. Yeah. Uh, be here to meet them at seven o'clock yeah. and to to thank them for being here that early. Uh, but if you are a regular attender, um, maybe you don't have little kids to to get ready to. You can be here at seven o'clock, and we'll we'll have the coffee on, and we'll be ready for you. Nice. Yeah, and keep in mind too for the Good Friday service at seven o'clock that will also be live streamed. Yeah. Uh, so you can go on our, on our website, norwinchristianchurch.com, and view the live stream there. And then also for Easter. Sunday morning, the 8.45 and 10.30 are both going to be live streamed as well. Excellent. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so for all of those, mm -hmm. uh, except for the 7 a.m., okay, there will be nursery and toddler yes. uh, classes available. Yes. And so uh, those those little ones will get uh, well taken care of and, and learn and have their own Easter uh, experiences there mm -hmm. in that. So that's for nursery age and toddlers. Um, of course, we didn't have it at 7 a.m. We thought, ah, oh, they're probably not up right. uh, anyways. And so both for Good Friday and those uh, three on Easter yep. and Saturday and two on Sunday, we have that. So If we could just highlight, too, briefly, the amount of work and preparation, not not just with the church staff, but the volunteers and everything oh, that goes absolutely. into this is incredible. Yeah. And it's cool. I enjoy seeing it from the inside, seeing how much work there is that that does uh, that is involved in it. So I hope everybody can take take a moment and appreciate that. Like, yeah, I, I mean everything from like I mentioned, coffee, cookies, communion preparation, everybody on stage leading worship, mm -hmm. uh, those in the the nursery and toddler, uh, the greeting team, the security team. Right. I'm probably missing three the or four. Team. The tech team. Yeah, it, it, yeah. I mean, those are teams of people. It's not just one person doing these right. things in each yeah. area. It's, uh, you know, a leader that's already organized these mm -hmm. people to be there. There'll be people at the prayer cove. Those are volunteers. I think there's just so many people. Mm -hmm. um, and I I was in the, the, the office hallway with Jonathan the other day, and uh, we were talking about there's a weekend where I was gone, and there's a few other staff members gone, and I think, Matt, it was you and Jonathan. We were running the we're, show. We're running the show as, <laughs> as, as staff members, and Jonathan said, man, but something we, we realized was just how many volunteers were here. Mm -hmm. And um, I can't tell you j just how much uh, how much goes into that, especially on a bigger weekend. A parking team, we forgot the parking team. Yeah, parking team, team yeah. They're going to be outside. It might be freezing cold. Yeah but they'll be, out there. they'll be out there. So just all those different things. Um, and for us as staff, I know it's a huge ask for us to say, Hey, we're going to, we're going to have four services. Um, and so just a big, I mean, if, if, if you're listening to this, you're a volunteer, huge thank you to you mm -hmm. for all you do, not just on Sunday mornings, but constantly. And I know, I know your heart is doing it for the Lord. I know your heart is doing it because you do know there are going to be people here for the first time that need to hear the gospel. And so you're doing it for the good of the gospel and for the advancement of God's kingdom. And so I just thank you for you for that, for your heart being in the right place with all of that. Um, it's not the advancement of Norwegian Christian Church. It's not the advancement of me on stage. It's not the advancement of uh, anybody other any other's name other than Jesus. And so um, we're excited yeah. about those services. I'm excited um, about. But we're gonna we're gonna be talking about. I told you what we're gonna be talking about at Good Friday. The Easter message is called the paradox of grace, okay. and how grace in and of itself is a paradox. And then um, I told you the next two weeks we're also gonna be talking about further paradoxes, paradox of truth, um, some different things. And so I'm excited about those messages and what we're gonna be talking about during Easter, and then a few weeks after Easter. It is a great opportunity to bring family members. I think you know Christmas and Easter are those times where um, the church and the gospel can be highlighted in our culture. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're 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 especially Easter, a Christian holiday, and so for you to to extend the invitation to a neighbor, or family member, say, "Hey, join me." And and my my ask to you when you make that ask is to let them know, say, "Hey, I, I'll I'll be there." Mm -hmm. You know, 
Tell me what service you're going to be there, and I'll be there. Uh, maybe it's not the most convenient for you to come at 845, uh, but if your neighbor can be there at 845, say, hey, I'm going to meet you at this place. I'm going to meet you at the front door, or I'll meet you uh, by the coffee in the cafe. Um, and it just gives them a sense of somebody's going to be there when mm-hmm. I show up. Because it could it be scary to walk into a room when you know no one else. And then you add on top of it, it's a church, mm-hmm. and maybe church is unfamiliar to them. And so for for you to be you know, there for them uh, can be a relief. Maybe you meet them out in the parking lot. Right. Say, hey, yeah, we'll go in huge. together, yeah. Yeah. introduce you to some people, introduce you to Jeff before he gets up there, all that good stuff. Right. So. Yeah, and I think you know we always look at Christmas and Easter as attendance-wise, one of our most attended services. But I think it's also a good maybe entry point for yeah, people for sure. to come into the church for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have to worry about, about being singled out. I, you don't have to worry about being singled out regardless right. when we, you come. We won't call out your name from right, stage. Right. Or yeah. like that, sure. Any visitor, please stand yeah. up. Yeah, it's so awkward. Yeah, we, we don't do that here. But uh, but yeah, it, it's, a, it's a good time to, if you want to come and check us out, and just kind of blend in for a Sunday, see what we do and how we do it. It's mm-hmm. a it's a great opportunity to do so. Yep, for sure, for sure. We are a very welcoming church, I think. Mm-hmm. You know, being on the inside, maybe it's different for me because I do know a, a lot of the volunteers and the people around here, but uh, I do think you'll find a place here with us on mm-hmm. Easter. So we'd love to extend that invitation to all of you listening. Yeah, absolutely. So as we and Matt, here's a quick trivia question. So you said, you know, Christmas, mm-hmm. Easter, our highest services. What is our third highest service traditionally? Oh, hmm. I'm going to say the Sunday. No, I was going to say the Sunday before Memorial Day, but I feel like that's probably one of our lowest. Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Yes. Mother's Day. Yes. Everybody comes for their Everybody, mom. Yeah, that's right. Which is good. Yeah, I'm so, embarrassed that I didn't even think right, of that. Sorry, a little, mom. Little church trivia for right. you. There you it's go. It's true for our church. Probably yeah. true for most churches. Right. So. Right. There you go. So okay. Yeah. Well. Thanks, Jeff. Absolutely. We want to, again, just uh, invite everybody listening or watching to one of our Easter services. Good Friday, the 29th. Yep, 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. We will have nursery and toddler toddler for that. Saturday evening at 6 o'clock. That's right. On the 30th. Correct. Nursery toddler for that as well. Yes. And then Sunday morning. 7 a.m., no nursery or toddler. So, that's the only one That's the it. only one. Yep. And then our regular 845 and 1030 services. Uh, find out more information at our website, norwinchristianchurch.com, and we hope that you can join us for one of those services. Thank you for tuning in to NCC Unplugged. If you've enjoyed listening to our podcast, we encourage you to share this with your friends and family. NCC Unplugged is available on all major podcast platforms. And if you're ever interested in experiencing Norwin Christian Church firsthand, we invite you to join us for our services every Sunday at 845 and 1030 a.m. We have engaging classes available for all ages, ensuring there's something meaningful for everyone in our church community. For more information about NCC or any other inquiries, visit norwinchristianchurch.com 